Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this Olivetti desktop computer, the Olivetti M330P. Now this computer is not my computer, it's a computer from one of my subscribers who asked me if I would be interested in making a, a video on it and obviously I did. It came with a matching Olivetti VGA monitor, a very specific uh, model, very recognizable with the big bezels here. And this particular monitor also came with an LED segment display here used to store and retrieve video preferences. I don't have the matching uh, Olivetti keyboard, but I do have the Olivetti mouse. And overall, it's just a really nice looking uh, computer, uh, much in line with the rest of the Olivetti computers from that time period. So yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so time to turn on the machine and see what she does. We get this ominous beep. And we finally see something coming up on the screen. So let's take a look. Our CPU has passed 486DX250 megahertz. Not the best 486 out there, but we'll see that afterwards. 640 kilobytes of base memory. No, that's not a really messy desk you're seeing in the reflection of the CRT. What we are seeing is the extended memory test. Let's see how much memory we have in this machine. I'm guessing eight megabytes, but I could be wrong, which I am because it's going all the way up to 12 megabytes. And then the machine really comes to life. Interrupt controllers, DMA controllers, keyboard, pointing device, everything passes. Let's see if it finds a fixed disk. You're always hoping for a working fixed disk in a system like this because this doesn't take just any hard drive. But it has found a fixed disk, also a floppy disk. We are getting a system configuration error but are greeted with this beautiful Olivetti splash screen. And I have to say I really enjoy these brand specific splash screens. It really goes to show that the engineers behind these products are somewhat proud of their creations splashing out the big Olivetti logo on this screen. You see the same thing with Intel Pentium 4, for example, something is that just consider this a nice touch to computers. But that being said, let's see what this setup utility has to offer after selecting the English language. Let's see what the computer is trying to tell us now. Now we get this checksum error, CMOS battery low, meaning that the battery in this computer is dead. And I'm guessing this is not going to be some easy replaceable coin cell battery. It's probably going to be some Dallas RTC chip, which is soldered directly onto the board in some god awful place somewhere on the motherboard using Italian super solder, which will be very difficult to remove. So all that we can do now is just, you know, configure our uh, CMOS data so that it complies with the, the stuff which is in the computer and see if we can actually boot the computer. So I'm just going to accept the new values and restart the computer. So it's doing its memory count again, base memory, extended memory, and then hopefully it will boot into some kind of operating system. And indeed she does, a Dutch version of Windows 95 with Microsoft Internet Explorer. So yeah, really excited to see how this will run on a 486DX2 running at 50 megahertz. Luckily we have 12 megabytes of RAM, so that should ease the pain a little bit. Now overall it was booting into the Windows 95 desktop relatively uh, quickly. So yeah, I was a bit surprised by that. Uh, we could hear the beautiful Windows 95 sound as it was loading up the desktop. And just listen to the hard drive doing its thing. I wonder if some of you guys recognize the brand of the hard drive. So let's load up the device manager by right clicking on my computer, selecting properties and then go into the device manager. So we see a Western Digital a display adapter, the ESS audio drive sound card, and that's basically it. I mean, this is a very, very basic computer. Let's go check out the hard drive. Uh, let's do a right click. 
so a 320 megabyte uh, hard drive now there wasn't a lot on the hard drive but we did have jill of the jungle installed on this machine and this is a nice little platform game that runs fine on this 486DX250 MHz. And it really captures the time spirit of, you know, these early MS-DOS uh, VGA color platform type games. Um, love the soundtrack to this thing. Um, uh, sounds reasonably well on this ESS audio drive also. And the gameplay is also really good. But let's start by looking at the exterior of the computer. We have the nice Olivetti logo here on the top left, M330P, PC speaker below that. Next to that, we see two LEDs, one for the power, one for the hard drive. We have a nice little power button, key lock above that, a 2.88 megabyte disk drive also, and a nice little grill here that you see on a lot of Olivetti's. On the side also, the nice grill here. So yeah, very recognizable, obviously. On the back, we have the power supply. We have a serial port, keyboard, mouse connector, PS2, parallel port, another serial port, and the onboard video output. There's one expansion card here, which is the sound card. And obviously you also have the power connector. So the model number here is XP2655. This is the internal model number. And obviously this is a computer made in Italy. But nothing can really prepare you for the horrors that you typically find inside in an Olivetti PC. So let's take a look. And the horror story begins with this plastic clip here on the case, as well as another one here, and here. Plastic clips here holding all kinds of stuff in place. Tabs that are very brittle. Elements that you have no idea what they are for. Plastic torture devices like this PC speaker holder where you need an engineering degree to figure out what you need to do with it. Ultimately leading up to the inevitable. Broken off plastic clips. Thank you, Olivetti. We also need to be very careful that we don't uh, break something here. For example, here the power connector which leads up to the power supply is also something which is pretty fragile. But in the name of science, we are going to go ahead and we are going to disassemble the machine completely. So help me God, because we want to see the internals of this thing. And a lot of stuff is currently blocking our view. So yeah, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. We have the power supply. We have some drive bays here for the disk drive and the hard drive. The motherboard is completely beneath the two. And I guess we're gonna start by removing the 16-bit ISA ESS audio drive sound card, which is located here in this riser card. 16-bit ISA, kind of a weird shape, but not all that uncommon for these old cards. This already gives us a view on uh, some of the motherboard components here, the Western Digital Video chip, for example. We also have an AMD chip of some kind. I'm guessing that's the flash uh, ROM. Here we have the drive bay, which contains the disk drive and the hard drive. So obviously everything is integrated on the motherboard. So I'm just going to be disconnecting the power cables and the ribbon cables here for both the floppy disk drive as well as for the hard drive. There's also this proprietary, uh, I think it's proprietary at least, uh, power plug from Olivetti that goes into the motherboard. And then, yeah, very gently, we push away this little plastic tab here so that we can push the drive bays on out. There are two clips here also, which hold the drive bays in place. And then we can just remove the entire unit completely. And here we have the CPU, which has this cute little heatsink uh, attached to it. 
So let's go ahead and remove that and see what we have beneath here. And here we can see that it's an Intel 486DX2 running at 50 megahertz. These CPUs run at a front side bus speed of 25 megahertz, which is significantly slower than your DX33 or DX266 megahertz CPU. This CPU is also not to be confused with the Intel DX50 megahertz, which has a front side bus speed of 50 megahertz. In the vicinity of the CPU, we also have the floppy connector and the hard drive connector, as well as this proprietary Olivetti power supply connector. If we take a look at this drive bay here, we have the 2.88 megabyte floppy disk drive, but also the Western Digital Caviar 2340 340 megabyte hard drive dated July of 1993. And we also have a Sony 2.88 megabyte floppy disk drive. So yeah, it's pretty uh, rare to see these popping up in systems. I mean, like 99% of the floppy disks are 1.44 megabytes. So yeah, this is a nice change. Now this machine has 12 megabytes of RAM. 8 megabytes is provided by these 8 SIM modules here, but there is 4 megabytes on board. Here we have the Western Digital VGA chip for the display. And here we have the riser card that we need to remove if we want to remove the power supply unit as well. So four 16-bit ISA slots. But in order to get full access to the motherboard, we need to remove this power supply unit. And for that, we need to pull this little plastic tab away so that we can really gently move the power supply out of the way. Please take into account that the power supply uh, power button is also connected here. So we need to make sure that we don't rip that one out. But all in all, it's fairly easy to remove the power supply. And here we can see the Dallas chip, which was hidden underneath the power supply. And luckily for us, the Olivetti engineers decided to put the Dallas chip into its own socket, making it very easy to replace the Dallas chip. So yeah, here we have the CPU with the heatsink, floppy drive connector, hard drive connector, power supply connector. We have the riser uh, slot here. We have lots of IO on the motherboard directly. We have the VGA adapter, the Western Digital, the memory, feature connector for the video card. But if we want to take the motherboard out, we also need to remove this little assembly for the PC speaker. And in order to do that, we have a couple of plastic clips that we need to take into account because this whole assembly here is routed into the motherboard. So we will gently need to push it forward. And for that, we need to pull these two tabs here. Of course, we also need to disconnect the PC speaker, which again uses a proprietary connector. Never seen one of these before, but seems to be some kind of six pin connector. And then by gently opening up the clips here of this housing, we can gently push the whole assembly forward and then it should just slide right on out. We can pick it up here from the motherboard so that we have a good view of the motherboard. And if we decide to remove it from the case, we can do so. But now back to our pesky Dallas chip here that we need to replace. Again, luckily it is socketed, so we just need to lift it out of its socket. Now this is a DS12887A chip. Now these things are still being manufactured. You can order them in uh, online stores like RS Components, for example. I wouldn't recommend searching for new old stock as you risk the battery being depleted as well. So I just went ahead and bought new ones. These are 12,887A plus chips. They are compatible with the uh, original ones. So let's just open this one up. It's nicely packaged. But you do need to really take care of the pins here on this chip because they are very uh, brittle. Uh, it's very easy to, to bend them and especially if they are packaged like this, I mean, it's not really ideal. But yeah, this is just a drop in replacement for the Dallas chip. 
So yeah, let's just drop in that Dallas chip into its socket and then assemble the PC again. And that wraps up part one of this video. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. In part two, I'm going to be covering my top five positive things on this Olivetti and also my top five negative things on this Olivetti. There will also be a part three where I will go into the software side of things. We'll be installing some games, some application, and we're also going to be doing some benchmarking and comparing this PC to a regular clone 486 PC, perhaps a 486 DX33 and DX266 megahertz. For now, I'm just going to leave you guys with the wonderful startup sound of Windows 95. So I really hope to see you guys again in part two on this Olivetti series. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit that like button and drop a comment in the comment section below if you want to. Take care everybody and see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.